Selamat berjumpa lagi. I'm Raisa Chintami of the Indonesia channel at the ASEAN Secretariat in Jakarta. Xin chào and welcome to ASEAN Today. I'm Chen Mingnan of VTC10 NetViet in Hanoi and this is your weekly look into the dynamic Southeast Asia region. We begin right here in Vietnam where the bodies of 39 Vietnamese were returned home. All were found dead in the back of a refrigerated truck in Essex in the United Kingdom on October 23rd. They arrived at Hanoi's Noi Bai International Airport on November 27th. Their families were assisted by several groups in the cost of getting them home. The truck drivers accused of 39 counts of manslaughter after admitting to assisting illegal immigration plans. The victims total eight women and 31 men and boys. Myanmar's leader faced an international court over genocide charges involving an ethnic minority. In a three-day hearing that began on December 10th, Aung San Suu Kyi urged judges at the International Court of Justice in The Hague to throw out the case brought by Gambia. It alleges that Myanmar's military actions against the country's Muslim Rohingya included indiscriminate killings, mass rapes, torture and the displacement of 750,000 people. Suu Kyi appealed to the court to let her country's judicial system adjudicate any crimes. Although the focus here is on members of the military, I can assure you that appropriate action will also be taken against civilian offenders in line with due process. There will be no tolerance of human rights violations in the Rakhine or elsewhere in Myanmar. The Nobel Peace Prize winner has received international criticism for not speaking against alleged abuses. A decision is due within several weeks. Global defense leaders gathered in Bangkok for the six ASEAN Defense Ministers Meeting Plus, and they reaffirmed their commitment to join efforts to promote regional peace and tackle threats of all forms. ASEAN defense leaders meet with counterparts from eight dialogue partners, including China and the United States, on November 17. They discussed traditional and non-traditional security challenges such as terrorism and cyber security. They also held in-depth discussion on maritime challenges, including those relevant to the territorial conflict in the East Sea. We'll hear from defense leaders directly in our hot seat segment. South Korea will play a key role in the building of Indonesia's new capital city. That was one of the results of a major trade summit between the two countries. ASEAN Today's Dalton Tananaka is in Seoul with more on that and details of a broader framework. Dalton. Raisa, a successful meeting between Indonesia's President Joko Widodo and South Korea's President Moon Jae-in wrapped up successfully on November 25th in Pusan, 325 kilometers southeast of this city. The occasion was the ASEAN-Korea Commemorative Summit where the two leaders witnessed the signing of the Comprehensive Economic Partnership Agreement. Indonesia will get broader access to the South Korean market, specifically industrial, fishery and agricultural products. South Korea would get wider access in Indonesia for industrial raw materials that would facilitate investment. Saya senang melihat kemajuan hubungan bilateral Indonesia dan ROK termasuk kerjasama yang konkret dari kunjungan saya ini. On the issue of Indonesia's planned capital relocation from Jakarta to East Kalimantan, South Korea will provide technical assistance in urban planning and design and development of public works and housing. President Widodo said the new capital will be designed as a smart, green and safe city. Plans are for the overall agreement to be signed in the first half of 2020. Raisa, back to you in Jakarta. Thank you, Dalton. The 30th Southeast Asian Games kicked off in the Philippines on November 30th. By the end of the sports competition on December the 11th, the host country was the overall champions with 149 gold medals, including a first ever gold in women's basketball. Vietnam placed second, followed by Thailand. This year's SEA Games featured 15 new sports events, including eSport, lawn bowling and underwater hockey. The next SEA Games in 2020 will be right here in Vietnam. Jakarta's notorious traffic problem is finally getting relief with the help of a new mass transit system. And along with easing congested roads, it's also projected to bring business to the capital. ASEAN Today's Prisma Kinanti sat down with the President and Director of MRT Jakarta, William Sabandar. 
uh, we know that the first one, the first project, was a joint uh, project with Japan. Exactly. Um, how was the investment? Was it a good investment though? It's, for uh, it's both a good sides? investment for the first uh, first project. Yeah, we uh, we built this 16 uh, kilometers uh, line uh, with uh, the, the investment value is about 1.2 billion uh, US dollar. Yeah. Uh, it's G2G projects actually, uh, and uh, MRT was assigned by the uh, central government and the provincial government to uh, to uh, uh, to do the uh, the project. Yeah, uh, we uh, with with this confidence, I think uh, why I said because with 1.2 billion, you can have a benefit in terms of economic growth. Uh, 10 to 20 times of, of that number because now you see the development along the line uh, it will bring uh, impact to uh, 12 to 20 uh, billion US dollar. The first phase, um, the ROI was predicted to be four to five years. You know, looking at the good response yeah. from the citizens in Jakarta, do you think the second one would be, you know, a little bit faster in terms of the return of investment? Uh, return on investment is in terms of the operation. In terms of the construction, it will take longer. But this is uh, this is because of uh, this is uh, under the area of the of the government of Indonesia and government of Jakarta. When I that, when I talk about uh, uh, return in terms of the operational investment, it is it's it's very much to cover the operational cost of the MRT Jakarta, and uh, you are right. Uh, we are uh, we estimate that in the four and five uh, years they will be about the same because what uh, what happened here we are predicted the the, the, the passengers of 130,000 uh, maximum or 107 270,000. When you open the second line, that line will carry until 400,000 passengers. So the amount uh, will 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 be so we need to provide more services. Uh, the key is actually how you can uh, you can not just rely on the on the tickets revenue uh, because tickets revenue is being subsidized, but uh, how you can bring the non-tickets revenue. Yeah, it's interesting about non fare box. Uh, yeah. I would like to ask yeah. more about it. What are the aspects that are included? You know. Well, uh, the first, uh, for example, from the for, uh, from the first years of our operations, we have uh, the, uh, the the four aspects, four four uh, components of non-tickets. One is the advertising, uh, advertisements. Uh, you can see uh, along the line in the in the train. The second one on the from the naming rights. Uh, you can see our station is being uh, named. There are a few uh, of yeah, it. There are a few yeah. of it, and then uh, the uh, some of this uh, the property the developer bring that so the the. The private sectors, uh, so we uh, work with them on on bringing the naming right. Uh, the third one is on the telecommunication systems. This is also, and the fourth one is uh, on uh, on a retail system. Out of those four, uh, which one gives the biggest contribution? The biggest is coming from actually from uh, naming rights and advertising, which is about ninety percent uh, of the. What of about our the income. amount? Uh, well, uh, this year's uh, the, the total non fare box uh, is about 225 uh, billion rupees, yeah, uh, and I think 200 200 billion is contributed, uh, yeah, or more. It's actually contributed from those two components. Okay, the success of MRT Jakarta. Um, a lot of people are eyeing to have you know the same right. public transportation yeah. system in other cities yeah. outside Jakarta. Do you think this can be a benchmark? Probably, you know, in the next capital city of we, Indonesia. We, we want to be the ben benchmark, and then our 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 uh, target is to set the uh, MRT Jakarta to operate at the international standard. The second phase of the system is predicted to begin operation in 2024. More ASEAN today is coming up shortly. The status of regional peace and stability. Defense leaders in the hot seat. Next. You're watching ASEAN Today, I'm Raisa Chintami in Jakarta. And I'm Chen Mingan in Hanoi. Defence leaders at the 6th ASEAN Defence Ministers' Meeting in Bangkok focused on security threats and maritime challenges. Here are excerpts from key speeches at the gathering on November 17th. 
many shared perspectives about mutual benefits, about how we can uh, step up defence relations between our two ministries as well as between TNI and SAF and how we can tackle common security challenges together. Uh, we also made a, 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 a pledge uh, that, you know, as close neighbours there may always be uh, uh, points of uh, friction now and then, but we felt that we really ought to uh, find ways to cooperate uh, just on a personal level. I think this uh, meeting with new defence ministers was uh, very, very good. ASEAN और एक वे ऐसा यह ऑफिशियल प्लेटफार्म है यहां पर कि आसियान कंट्रीज के डिफेंस मिनिस्टर्स बैठकर विभिन्न मुद्दों पर परस्पर चर्चा करते हैं और जहां तक इसका उद्देश्य है इसमें कहीं दो मत नहीं है कि स्ट्रेटजिक ट्रस्ट बिल्ड अप करने की दृष्टि से भी यह फोरम बहुत ही महत्वपूर्ण है और इसके साथ साथ सस्टेबल सिक्योरिटी इंश्योर करने के लिए भी सारे देश 18 के 18 देश एक दूसरे को इसमें कोऑपरेट कर सकते हैं क्योंकि सिक्योरिटी जब तक सस्टेनेबल ना हो तब तक उस सिक्योरिटी का कोई मतलब नहीं होता है और जितने भी आसियान कंट्रीज के देश हैं उनमें कहीं पर भी कोई मानवीय संकट भी आता है कोई प्राकृतिक आपदा आती है तो उसमें सभी एक दूसरे को सहयोग करेंगे यह उद्देश्य है आतंकवाद का सवाल हो मैरिटाइम सिक्योरिटी का सवाल हो मिलिट्री टू मिलिट्री कोऑपरेशन का प्रश्न हो मिलिट्री मेडिसिन का प्रश्न हो इन सब सारे मुद्दों पर खुली चर्चा इस प्लेटफॉर्म पर होती है और जहां तक भारत का प्रश्न है भारत तो सचमुच हमारी जो एक्ट ईस्ट पॉलिसी है उसके लिए तो आसियान को एक अपना केंद्र बिंदु मानता है इसलिए भारत के लिए तो ये आसियान की मीटिंग निश्चित रूप से अन्य देशों की अपेक्षा ज्यादा महत्वपूर्ण है Leaders also stressed the need to respect international law and expressed the hope to soon finalize an effective and substantive code of conduct. More ASEAN Today is coming up shortly. We will head to Thailand. That's where hardcore prisoners are turning to a softer power. This is ASEAN Today. And we are coming to you this week from Jakarta and Hanoi. Foreigners know it as the Bangkok Hilton, while Thais have nicknamed it the Big Tiger. ASEAN Today's Fozum Azim reports on one of Thailand's oldest prisons, where inmates are turning to religion to reflect on their crimes. The Bangkwang Central Prison in Bangkok has a reputation for being one of the hosses and most unforgiving prisons in the country. Its severe overcrowding takes a heavy psychological, physical and mental toll on inmates. It wasn't built to be an ordinary prison, but a penitentiary for the worst offenders who are serving life sentences and those on death row awaiting execution. For the almost 6,000 inmates here, being in their 6 by 4 meter cell with 40 other inmates for 15 hours every day is the harsh reality for life behind bars. Kai is a convicted killer. This prison has been his home for more than a decade. Before, every day from waking up to eating, showering, go to bed, I lived in shackles. They were sealed to my ankles 24-7. Every second you know that you are no longer free. The prison's condition have caused many prisoners to lose either their life or their sanity. 
but a new prison program is hoping to change this and help reform the character of inmates through art, religion, and self-reflection. The art of sculpting Buddha statues has been adopted here for 30 inmates. Boredom makes inmates think of bad thoughts because they live with other criminals. We want to change their mindset with activities they can connect with. Sculpting through Buddhism allows religion to polish their minds. Around 95% of Thais are Buddhist, and it is widely believed that making Buddha images provides an opportunity for reflection and meditation. I didn't think I could do it. I didn't have much concentration because of my time in prison. But I started to enjoy it, and I become so focused that I don't want to leave my chair or even take a break. That's what happened to all of us. And as Kai learns how to shape and mold the clay into sacred forms and figures, he realizes that he also has the ability to shape and mold his own destiny. Fawzul Azim for ASEAN Today. Here are several events on the ASEAN calendar. The Binawabal Festival 2020 will kick off the new year on January 1st in the Philippines. The Royal Langkawi International Regatta will be held from January 6th to the 10th in Langkawi, Malaysia. And the 2019 Chingay Parade will color the streets of Singapore from January 31st to February 2nd. A major shopping street in Indonesia's Yogyakarta province is a popular destination for unique and low-cost souvenirs. ASEAN Today's Aisha Nadira takes us there. Jalan Malioboro is the most famous street in Yogyakarta, a shopping haven for visitors. Many shops and small-scale stalls offer numerous souvenirs, from batik fabrics to handmade items. Clothing in beautiful models are made into t-shirts, blouses, shirts, sarongs, wallets, pencil cases, and bags. Yang pertama, uh, kita harus teliti barangnya ya, karena uh, itu kan kebanyakan handmade. Jadi mungkin agak kurang rapi atau maklum buat tantangan kan? There are unique wooden toys such as bicycles, cars, trains, and helicopters. Abundant accessories, sandals, and belts are laid out everywhere along the street. Part of the fun is being able to strike a smart bargain because the art of shopping here is to get good quality, unique souvenirs at low cost. Kalau yang di pinggir-pinggir kayak gini emang konsepnya harus tawar-menawar gitu mas, tapi harganya relatif lebih murah kok daripada kalau yang di toko-toko. After shopping, tourists can try Yogyakarta's diverse street food. It's best to ask for the price of the dish first before deciding to eat at this lesehan, where local items are typically eaten while sitting on mats. Many places do not list down prices in the menu. Yang menarik dari Malioboro ini tempatnya itu tidak pernah sepi, Mas. Terus apa ya? Di setiap tokonya itu tuh ada ciri khasnya yaitu batik. Malioboro Street is 500 meters away from Lempuyangan Station in the center of Yogyakarta. Tourists can take an andong, a cart, becak, a trishaw, or the Trans Jogja bus service to come and spend their leisure time here. Visitors enjoy taking pictures in front of the iconic nameplate of Malioboro Street to mark their arrival in this popular Central Java destination. Well, I like Malioboro because there's a lot of things going on here, a lot of good shops, nice places where you can buy things, lots of interesting people. Uh, it's always very active, very alive. Things are going on all the time. So it's one of my favorite places in the world. One of my favorite jalam in the world. Malioboro Street is brimming with tourists on weekends and attracts an even larger crowd during the holiday season and special events. And if you want to visit a couple of other spots nearby, try the Museum Frederberg and Beringharjo Market. Aisha Nadira for ASEAN Today. We like hearing from you throughout the ASEAN region and the world. All of our episodes are posted on YouTube, so check us out there if you can't find us on your local TV channel. Then let us know what you are thinking or what you want to see on the program. Email us at ASEANtodayTV at gmail.com. Post something on our Facebook page or tweet us at ASEANtodayTV. Indonesia continues to grab global visitor attention. That's right, Megan. ASEAN's biggest member just won another honor. 
The lifestyle magazine Condé Nast Traveler named Indonesia the top visitor destination on its list of 20 countries for its island resorts and luxury hotels. The 2019 Reader's Choice Award surveyed 600,000 people. Thailand was in second place, the Philippines in eighth, and Cambodia 19th. I think Vietnam should be on that list too. And that's ASEAN Today. I'm Raisa Chintami in Jakarta. And I'm Chen Mingan in Hanoi. Thank you for watching and please join us again next time.